Yeah. I'm like we're in here. I'm listening to the radio, and you know, I heard some people doing some confessions and some. Uh, they, I guess they call them oral expressions, and those oral expressions had me thinking about some stuff. You know, I. I don't know if it's me, but I feel like men, we do a bad job of verbally, like verbally expressing we love women. I don't know if it's some hereditary thing or just like acting speak louder than words. But, you know, your woman will tell you she loves you every day, but a man will just be like, hey, I'm taking care of you. Yeah. And then a woman will. I feel like a woman would do the opposite, you know? A woman would talk about something you ain't doing. You know what I'm saying? She'll bring up the whole, well, you ain't doing this, you ain't doing that. And a man would just do and not do the small thing. And I think that big disconnect creates a lot of disconnect in relationships. Because on one end, um, you guys not pulling together. You know, you got one person pushing, one person pulling. And in those situations, you encounter, like, no forward progression. And, you know, growing with any person is always a really hard thing to do, to grow with somebody, because you you don't see the growth, you know? If somebody go to school and get an education, you see a diploma, but you, you don't see the education in them. You don't see the advanced knowledge they have all you see is their what they got to show for and you know I, I see us men do that a lot of times we get caught into the the visual of love and not the I guess the emotion and the non physical thing like the senses of smell smell like love sound like love we be we be on that hole it don't feel like love and we get so caught into the lack of feeling that we could like miss the whole relationship you know and miss out on something special you know by just not even focusing on the right senses so Next time I feel like you in a situation, you feel like, you know, your significant other don't love you, evaluate the senses of them loving you, you know, because if they're feeling the love, smelling the love, sounding the love, that should make up for the lack of, you know, it, it should make up for one of those senses, you know, like, I give you an example of... Uh, a woman cooking dinner. That's that smell like love, right? Her smell, it ain't her fixing the dinner. It's the smell. It's the smell like dinner. And that's that's like super critical because you get caught into the whole, you know, the feel. And then the woman will be like how it tastes. And she'll get so caught into the concept of how it tastes. They're focusing on you eating. You eating her food is you showing you love her. But her focus is how it tastes. And you like, you know, you cook. I love you because you cook. And she's like, well, you don't love me because it don't taste good. And then you start having that whole disconnect. So I think it's super critical for you just to find the particular sense of love. And I think I may read up on that a little more. I think that'll be super critical to my education of love because my education of love is it, it's, it's so crazy you know you show me you love me by not paying me no attention <laughs> you show me you love me by leaving me alone you show me you love me by not calling so as you can tell most of my relationships are definitely toxic and negative because I, for some reason if it's you know if your food nasty you don't make me feel good I take that as you love me, you know, but if you like sitting here doing the normal person senses of love, I will 
not be understanding of what you're trying to do. You know, you could be sitting there clear as day loving me, and I'd be like, man, what did you do it? You know, somebody like, for example, somebody buying me a gift, $60 gift. I'd be mad because I'm like, man, you spent $60. But if you give me a $60 gift card, I'm like, ooh, you empowered me to purchase something that I want. You know? And I don't know if I got that from my... Well, I guess I got it from my upbringing of how I would treat out of love. But still, you know, I grew up like that. And I'm telling you, it's like that. So... Why, why be rebellious and not continue with what I feel comfortable with? And that's what another thing I struggle with when I'm telling you what I am and you sitting there like, oh, that's not who you are. And I'm like, man, you ain't comprehending me. And they be like, yeah, I am comprehending you. I understand you better than you. I can read you, Michael. And it's like, no, you you clearly can read me from your perspective, but you ain't understanding me. <laughs> you know, I'm telling you what it is, and your response is, that ain't what it is. And it's like, ain't you being counterproductive. You know, love ain't supposed to be counterproductive. Love supposed to be a productive. It's supposed to be a 100% pie. You know, we spend the relationship trying to get 50-50. We ain't gonna be 50 50. We need to be 100%. You know? And I think a lot of times, you know, it comes up in relationships when you're going through these things and we try to think about it in the simplest form and we miss out on the simplest form because we don't clearly understand what the person is bringing to the table because what they're communicating, you don't understand, you know? And I will say this. Men are easy to admit they don't understand, but women struggle with accepting a man don't understand, and you just run into these whole circles around each other, and you know, a man who feels single, or a man who got options, or even a woman who feels single, or a woman who got options, they're not going to play this whole cat and mouse game too long, they're going to lose interest in it, you know? It's like if you date somebody, I, I give you a prime example. I go through this a lot. When you first start talking to somebody, you're going to talk every day because you're trying to get to know them. But once I feel like I know you, I want to see how you're growing. You know, it's like uh, when, you first learn, when you first learn how to grow a plant. You know, when you first learn how to grow a plant, you're not literally looking at the plant every day after you're being informed, hey, it takes time. This is how you treat the plant. You're going to treat the plant how it's been proven to be treated. You know, you're going to treat the plant and keep moving. You're not going to sit here and be like, well, if I keep watching the plant all the time, it'll do something. Yeah, you can do that, but, you know, don't get mad when somebody inform you something and you don't listen. You know, somebody inform you something. You don't listen. Okay, cool. Just don't listen. You know, but as you endure yourself looking at that plant not growing you can't express frustrations with well this plant not growing it's like mm, you got mad when i told you you got mad at the end how can i be with you is this how you react to being educated you know and you know that's that's definitely like one of my challenges that i encounter a lot of times is trying to have those conversations and those in the correct moment, you know. It sound all good when it's just hee hee ha ha I'm getting to know you, but when I think I know you, you know, knowing somebody, knowing something, you have expectations, you know, and that's all it is, you know. Once you conclude a game, you got expectations. Yep. And when you in the relationships and when I say relationship, I mean from the moment you say, hey, and we talking. I don't mean, like, we got a label. Because what I've noticed and what I've learned is when you start something with somebody, it is what they think it is. It's not always 
what you think it is. You know, it's, it's what the other person what you think it is. So if they think it's something special, it's something special. Regardless if you think it's not special. You know, that's why it's really important to, like, know how you spend your time. Know how you use your time. That's why I feel like a lot of times people struggle because when you first get to know somebody, you, you spend it, you enjoying getting to know them. You know, you enjoying it. And then once you get to know them, it's like, I know you. <laughs> How much more do I want to know? Do I want to stop knowing you? And that's when a disconnect is. Because a lot of disconnect comes from the pushing and pulling. And the lack of compatibility. Because I know, like, at this stage in my life, I know what I'm compatible with. I ain't found it. I lost it several times, but I ain't found it again. I lost it several times. A lot of my things, I think like the last person I was really in tune with, my work schedule affected us. And it's like, man, I'm working for a reason. If you can't support and stay on the train for the whole ride, you can't get, you know, discouraged and hurt when you ain't at the end, you know? Now, I don't know what the end gonna be, but, you know, like, now, you know, I'm not working that job, and I'm like, man, we perfect time, but it's like, man, she quit, you know, she quit, I can't reward you for quitting, I'm not gonna punish you, but I can't reward you for quitting, so, that's all I'm gonna say on that, alright, peace out, holla.